my message is let's learn to be there in the media to talk about what you do, to leverage the our profession. More than 50% of healthcare workforce are nurses and the care they provide change the life. You are listening to the Global Nursing Leader show. Here I will talk with the nursing leaders who are globally known for their leadership skills and care delivered. Today we are going to talk with you. Hi Yeti, can you please tell me something about you? I'm a nurse for uh, more than 30 years, which means I've been through quite a lot. But the milestones in my uh, work were absolutely the decision between the community and the hospital. We have these two settings for uh, most of nurses, community or hospital. And I found out I could really do both, which is not something nurses usually do. Uh, starting in a hospital setting, I was in a, a nurse, an ICU nurse, and I really uh, loved the hectic work and the amazing uh, feeling of energized. And then when I was suggested to go to, it was a different, but the feeling was you really do know the population and you really do make meaningful relationship with people. So I think the most important thing was to know I'm able to meet those two settings and uh, really do best and learn every time a new case is the best. And I've been uh, doing uh, many years in IVF, fertility is really a big deal in Israel. Family structure is the most important thing. And once you don't have children, it's really difficult. So we have 26 IVF units in the... So between caring for people uh, to have a family and then uh, caring for nurses, years of managing for them, I think it's really a lot like very similar because... the feeling i've got for patient i really move them in towards and uh, managing so i guess th- those were the key unit in hospital and then moving from hospital and treating patient to treating nurses caring for and managing how do you feel after selected in list of top 100 midwives by women in global health? and i want to congratulate also thank you so much i really was uh, humbled and excited and i guess i felt that i got that uh, uh, honor on behalf of nurses. It wasn't to me that I was really on the podium. It was the fact that I'm uh, sharing their voice in social media and in the world around Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, so people could know what we are doing. So I felt very, very honored and very excited. And I think it's the first time that it's a nurse for real. But also I felt like it wasn't just my honor. It was the honor of all nurses around. And so I was really happy to, to be part of it. So as you said, community versus hospital. So how community aspect of nursing is changing in your country or maybe you have any ideas or thoughts you want to share from a global aspect? Absolutely. I think community has changed a lot during the last 50 years and especially the last 10 years. which means nurses do many things in the city that was part, once part of a hospital. Hospitals in Israel, and I think all over the world, are turning more ICU units and very intensive care of people that is not, are not able to manage it in the community. But everything else is going to the community. We are doing palliative care and end of life. And of course, a caring uh, of chronic patients. that lives in the community and wants to be part of uh, the neighborhood and the family. Uh, we're helping women raise kids, grown up in the community, of course, taking care of pregnancy all over the community, nothing to do with us unless it's a high risk or something like that. And of course, the normal everyday life of preventive, doing preventive nursing is all about the community. The fact that we are dealing with uh, finding breast cancer prior to the disease in uh, mammograms and in all kinds of preventive measures and immunization. All those parts were community-based and they are really preventing coming to the... But I think the part of the nurse is actually managing the care of the family. Once a person is coming to her clinic or she's making a house, which is a lot in Israel, She's able to see the person, not just him, but him as part of the whole family. And she's able to see who is the uh, main caregiver and what she can do and what kind of profession she involved inside. This is an everyday level in the clinic. 
first clinics, but it's also in the work of nurse that really have authorities and they can do different things, changing a prescription, changing the amount of medication. So I think um, the importance of a nurse in a community is growing up. And at this last year, over the pandemic, you even saw it uh, more than ever because most of the patients with COVID were actually staying at home in isolation and nurses would call them twice a day, check uh, the measurements, of course, and see what's going on and making a decision whether they can stay home or they need another uh, help. But I think it's going to be more and more over the years. Whatever we can't do uh, in the community will stay in the hospital. It's going to be very, very. My next question. You are involved in the policy and management side of nursing. So how you transformed your career in this direction? Well, I think um, what I do mostly is uh, I have different kind of area that I transform. The first one is uh, the planning of the nurse's future. What it's going to be like in the 10 years uh, ahead in is what do we need more? What kind of nursing expertise do we need? And then, of course, after we make a decision with our 14 hospitals and 25K uh, clinics, which is in the Calitas organization, it's the, the largest health organization in Israel, Then we uh, sit at a decision making table and we think about it as how do we plan for the next. Israel has um, a nursing policy that really uh, talks about three um, points. The first of all is adding nurses to the workforce. We, just like other places in the world, we don't have enough. So growing the number of nurses and the number of people who want to enroll in nursing school, this is one of the things we're working on, all of us together. And then, of course, the second thing is how do you make the nurse more educated and uh, has more authorities? This has got to do with uh, the future learning and whatever she needs to learn to become uh, a midwife, to become specialized in palliatives, to become specialized in wounds, every kind of direction. So that's the second thing. It's um, continuing education. And of course, the third is to make sure that nurses go to the uh, highest level, which is nurse practitioner. In Israel, we have a nurse practitioner ever since uh, 2009. We started with palliative, we moved to di- diabetes, and uh, following by surgery, and following by uh, many more. And we're working on the amount of nurse practitioner that we need in every area and what it's going to be like for her working with the doctor and what she's going to do, what he's going to do, and whether she's going to be in the... This is the third area that I'm working uh, with my colleagues. It looks like a lot of nurse practitioners are coming up in the future uh, in Israel. So do you still think any area uh, where nursing shortages is there, any specialty or any current demand after the pandemic or any 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 way there is a shortage of any particular uh, nursing kind of specialty? Yeah, I guess over the year of the pandemic, we were able to see that we are not having enough ICU nurses. And even though this is one of the uh, most, uh, one of the profession that nurse really liked to work in, uh, they specialized in uh, using the ECMO that was used so much in patients with COVID. This is something we've seen we need to uh, have more. And over the year, we had uh, many courses, uh, but we still got to do more about it in the uh, intensive care department. Of course. The other thing is just like I said, the community-based nurses, this is going to be huge even after the uh, pandemic because what we've seen is that all move to virtual and online meeting with patients. And when you have an online meeting with a patient, you need to be really, really good in um, your observation of the patient. And this is something you can learn. We have a place in Israel that is a uh, uh, people can call and ask questions the nurses, uh, telehealth, uh, of course, center. But this center was not big enough for uh, the amount of um, 
cold that we had this year. So I think what we're going to see is more direction towards a virtual meeting and telehealth that we're going to see in the coming year. And we also will have to do some work on what we've done this year with nursing school. All the nurses school, and I guess uh, uh, also in India and elsewhere in the world, we went to online meetings and online learning. And it's not something that's going to stay. It's not going to go away. It's not instead of simulation, but it's really good for uh, teaching sometimes. And I think it's going to stay and we're going to work for that. Yeah, you are right in this direction. Obviously, uh, being an experienced nurse, and especially from the advanced country like Israel. <laughs> ICU nurses are in demand all over the world right now. Do you have any thoughts or any feelings after the pandemic started that any different kind of nursing role should be created? For example, communication disease, or we can say the pandemic nurse or some other other areas. Do you think any aspect uh, can be created uh, globally from the collaboration point of view? Absolutely. I'm all in for collaboration. And this is why I really want to do this podcast with you, of course. I think the power of nurses is so much stronger when we collaborate. We, are, we all have the same um, challenges towards us. And I think it's more or less uh, similar in most of the country in this year in the pandemic. And I think working together on many issues, um, the uh, leverage of the nursing profession, the way the world sees us, uh, the way we share knowledge with each other, the way we collaborate on different specific ex- expertise. This is so important. And think if something happened good from the pandemic and from the year of nursing and midwife, it's the fact that we really do need to do it all together because sharing knowledge and combining forces benefit everybody. I'm sure I can learn so much from the nurses in India. And, and, and of course, we can teach some uh, and we can inspire each other in many ways. So I think it's, it's a must. It's a must for all of us. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, any message you want to give to our audience? Our audience include from India or if, uh, even from, from Europe. I mean, most of the part of the world. So any message for the nurses you want to give? Yeah, I really do. Um, I think what happened, uh, I don't know if you heard about the Woodwell study. The Woodwell study actually checked the visibility of nurses in the media in two points apart in 20 years. And it turned out in 2018, and it was uh, the nurses released by the University of Washington, uh, that nurses was not, were not visible in the media. It was like 2% that they could find nurses talking to the media and talking to journalists. And this is really uh, quite bad. And it really doesn't go very well with the fact that we are the most trusted profession in the world. You know, the Gallup uh, study uh, survey that they do every year in December made it absolutely clear for the 19th time in a row that we are the most trusted profession. So there is a gap between the way we are portrayed in the media and the way uh, people feel about our profession and uh, nurses and how they are uh, advocate. People. And I think we should narrow this gap. And the way to narrow the gap is really uh, not be afraid to be there out in the media, the social media, in the media itself, television, radio, whatever need. It's like sometimes nurses are care only about the doing, the helping, the caring for patients. But when the journalist comes and they want to ask questions, she sometimes will refer to the doctor, to the physician, and to other friends. So I think my message, let's learn to be there in the media, to talk about what to leverage the uh, profession. Uh, don't run away. It doesn't mean you're uh, not as good nurse if you do sit at the decision uh, table and take part of it. If nurses would be in the decision-making table in government and uh, parliament and, of course, in the media. It's going to help the world to be a healthier place. So I believe it will benefit ourselves and it will benefit everybody else. So I'm telling all nurses, those who listen to me, 
don't be afraid, take a stand, start like a nurse uh, infopreneur. Just make a note of something, tell something that happened to you, read something that you see, a little research, a little something you have to do. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but don't, don't give up on this part of being a nurse. So that's much to all of you. Hoping you're going to join me. Okay. Let me ask one more question. Uh, <laughs> of course. You are highly active on social media, share updates regularly about nursing and midwifery and other topics. Yes. And uh, almost reaching out to every corner of the world because social media has the power. What motivates you to do this or how you bring this much energy? <laughs> That's a good question. And I think it started uh, of me being as a, a young woman, a, a writer too. I wrote for a big Israeli newspaper for many years. So many years I've done both, being a nurse and being uh, a journalist myself. Uh, but, you know, it's it's always been that uh, being a nurse was more important to me than being a journalist. But now I guess I'm combining those two uh, loves of my life. And uh, what happened actually is like, uh, that several years ago, we lost Tova. She was uh, a community nurse. A patient ended her life. He set her on fire right after she took his blood sample in the uh, which was amazing. He was 78 years old and she knew very well. And I guess he was in trouble and he had some issues and problems. This something was really rocked my world because when I was comforting nurses the other days, I realized they were not only uh, grieving losing uh, the friend, but they were uh, grieving the fact that they were being heard. So I guess that was my trigger to act on social media and let the world know who you are, who we are. So I'm doing it, of course, on top of my daily job. But I see it as a mission of my, this is the, my life. And I hope uh, if uh, nurses go in and see something that makes good about fashion, this is actually what I meant, what I wanted. And I guess it's just like everyone I found. My uh, capacity building is one of the biggest priorities of the governments all over the world. What are your insights on the area in the midwifery? Well, it is, a, I think, um, budget-wise, it's a real big issue. It's a real big issue. I think we have a very good health system in Israel, one of the best, but it doesn't have enough budgets and not enough uh, manpower. And it's a struggle that you do uh, many years because we're putting more uh, areas of expertise encouraging research and being linked you routine and we don't have enough so i think it's um in israel it's a, a constant issue just like i guess everyone else in the world but the priorities is pre pretty good uh when i'm thinking about last year and the pandemic we never had an issue in israel of pp everybody was safe everybody got, everybody got enough pp as much as they needed and I felt really uh, secure about it. But still, for uh, when we go out of this pandemic, hopefully, it's a big issue uh, because now everybody knows a uh, central place of care and it has to be prioritized. It's not in, a, in the way that we all think. So budget and more personnel, those are missions that every government in the world needs to agree.